and welcome to lecture two of the video lecture series. So in the last video, we went over units, dimensions, measurements, and scaling arguments, which are kind of like the basics of physics. And today we're going to proceed with a couple more fundamental concepts that are very important to build off of in the future. And today we're going to talk about vectors more specifically comparing between vectors and scalars and going over a couple of basics with vectors. So what exactly is a vector or a scalar? So vectors and scalars are related but are different and it's really important for you to be able to differentiate between them when looking at different values. Scalars have a magnitude and are specified by a number and unit and they obey the rules of arithmetic and algebra. And vectors, on the other hand, have both a magnitude and direction, and they obey rules of vector algebra. They follow certain vector rules of combination, which we'll look at later in another lesson. So vector quantities are quantities that have both a magnitude and direction, and thus can be represented by a vector. And some of the common ones are, say, velocity, displacement, and acceleration. Displacement is probably the simplest vector quantity, and we'll call a vector that represents a displacement a displacement vector, simply enough. And similarly, we refer to others like velocity vectors and acceleration vectors. And here, like many others, we'll represent vectors with an arrow, with its head at the arrow and the direction it's pointing, and the length of this arrow representing the magnitude of the vector. So now that we've kind of got the basic understanding of what a scalar or vector is, let's go over a couple of examples to see whether we really understand the difference between scalars and vectors. So the first one here we have is temperature. Think about it. When we think of temperature, do we give it a specific direction or do we specify it by a simple value, a number, a size? Temperature is a scalar because it doesn't have a direction. We simply say it's 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Next up is displacement, and if you remember this, we just went over on the last slide, so this one should be easy. So displacement is a vector because it has both a magnitude and direction. Next up is distance. Now this is similar to displacement, but they are not the same. Think about it. And it's okay if you don't know because we haven't learned this yet, but we'll go over it later. So displacement is a scalar as it only has a magnitude and we'll definitely go over the distance, sorry, the difference between distance and displacement in the very near future. And mass is one of the fundamental quantities we talked about in the last lesson. And think about it. Do we give mass a direction? No, we don't give mass a direction because it's a scalar. Okay, the last one we have is very similar to mass. And let's think about volume. Is volume a scalar or a vector? Volume is a scalar. Think about mass. Like mass, the volume also doesn't have a direction. Okay, so those were a couple of easy examples, and now that we've got that cleared up, let's say we have a path an object has taken with points A and B as shown here. If the particle has changed its position by moving from A to B, then we say that it has undergone a displacement from A to B, and we can draw an arrow representing the vector from A to B. Notice how the displacement from A to B is different from the actual path the particle has taken. Now the displacement vector tells us nothing about the actual path. It only represents the overall effect of the motion, not the motion itself. And also note that a vector is not anchored to a specific position. So it's the same if it's shifted around, 
only if its length and direction aren't changed, however. So here we have a bunch of arrows that all represent the same factor because they have the same length and direction, even though they're not in the same position. So that is the end of our first lesson on vectors. I hope we've all learned something new today, and thank you very much for joining me on this lesson.